What more can you tell me about GMO fish and what's wrong with them? Salmon is the current GMO fish that's been approved and is being eaten. Now, research on the health showed that it increased the reactivity of the serum that was taken from allergic people. It increased the, the appeared to increase the IGF-1, which is linked to cancer, and other hormones. But they used so few fish that it, nothing was statistically significant. Now remember, this is about to be, this was released into the food supply. And so you'd want them to be exhaustive in their health research. And they were designing it to avoid finding problems by using six fish in their study. And they used it a, a detection method, I think it was for IGF-1, where they couldn't even detect it in most fish, which means they were using the wrong detection method. But they didn't fix it. They just said, oh, yeah, it's, there's no problem. There are, these fish are engineered with growth hormone genes and a promoter that keeps the growth hormone gene on at all times. So it has a gene from an Arctic eel, has a gene from a different type of salmon. And so the fish normally, the growth hormone shuts down for a certain period of the year. This is on all the time. So the fish keep growing and keep growing and keep growing and keep growing. So it's to get them to market quicker. Now, that's why they have higher levels of hormone. But they're also hungry because they're growing. And we found that out when the Canadian scientists made their own genetically engineered fish in a similar way and put them into tanks. And when they put them into the tanks where it was just the GMO fish or GMO fish and natural fish, salmon, no problem if there was enough food. They reduced the amount of food to frankenfish freak. They started cannibalizing the competition, killing and eating the natural or genetically engineered salmon, causing population crashes or total extinctions in each tank. Also, because they were hungry, the tanks were sort of fake ocean or fake natural uh, uh, habitats. The normal salmon wouldn't go into certain areas. But the frankenfish did. They were aggressive. They were hunting to kill. So if, this, if these fish get released, and imagine these gangs of adolescent frankenfish going around and killing other fish, or maybe extinction. There was another type of fish called the Madaka, Japanese fish. They genetically engineered it. Its offspring only survived 70% of the time instead of 100% of the time. But it had a mating advantage because it grew a little bigger, so it was more appealing to the female. So they took the characteristics exactly as they had genetically engineered and put it into a computer program and introduced into the computer program 60 GMO Madaka into a population of 60,000. They ran it, and they were shocked to find Total extinction in 40 generations. Total extinction. So are we in favor of these rogue bands of ravenous fish aggressively killing in the oceans or extinct fish? Either way, not a good outcome. What's the status of the tipping point with GMOs? What does a tipping point mean and how close are we? I introduced the concept of the GMO tipping point. Not the tipping point uh, generically, but the GMO tipping point as the number of people needed who to seek non-GMO food in order to get the food industry to switch to non-GMO. We achieved the tipping point in 2013 with the natural products industry. And it was in part aided by the Whole Foods announcement that they would require products to be either organic or non-GMO project verified by 2018 in order to avoid contains GMO label. They have since not supported that, but that was their plan. And that caused the Russian, the basically the natural food industry, lined up to become verified. It was an 18-month backlog. Starting in January, around January 1st, Cheerios, 2014, Cheerios said it's non-GMO. Ten days later, Grape Nuts said it was non-GMO. And then more and more companies started declaring non-GMO. Now, I used to talk about the tipping point of 5% of the US population shifting, because if there was a drop of 
just a few percentage points in market share, that should be enough to create a change because the food companies weren't getting any sales advantage from using GMOs. If they were losing market share to the competitor that put non-GMO on the same shelf, they could simply change the supply chain and stop bleeding their market share. But now we have 46% of Americans seeking non-GMO food. So the tipping point is underway in the United States on GMOs. Now, because Roundup is sprayed on non-GMOs, eating non-GMO bread doesn't mean you're avoiding Roundup because wheat is sprayed with Roundup three to five days before harvest often. Same with oats and beans, etc. So our job has expanded to not just push people into non-GMO, but to push people into organic. So we created, Amy Hart and I created the film, Secret Ingredients, which is the number one most effective conversion tool to eat organic because it describes what happens to people when they do go to organic. They get better. So the tipping point is underway in the United States, but not around the world. It already happened in Europe in 1999. It happened on April 27th when Unilever said no GMOs in Europe. The next day was Nestle's. The next week was everyone else from high profile coverage in the media. We want to bring the tipping point around the world. And we hope that our films and materials do so. And we, we would love support on getting that out. But we also need to focus on protecting nature from the replacement by gene edited organisms, which if we don't stop that soon, that could be a catastrophe.